Hello, welcome back to the eighth section of this course. In this section, you will learn about background subtraction, frame differencing, and method to build background model. You will also learn to identify object in static video and the relation between morphological image processing and background modeling. Now let's move on to the first video of this section, background subtraction. Here you will be learning about the basics of background subtraction, which is used to detect moving objects in a static scene and the process to subtract background. We will also discuss about naive background subtraction. Background subtraction is very useful in video surveillance. Basically, the background subtraction technique performs really well in cases where we need to detect moving objects in a static scene. Now, a question must be arising in your mind. How is this useful for video surveillance? The process of video surveillance involves dealing with a constant data flow. The data stream keeps coming in at all times, and we need to analyze it to identify any suspicious activities. Consider the example of a hotel lobby. All the walls and furniture have a fixed location. Now if we build a background model, we can use it to identify suspicious activities in the lobby. We can take advantage of the fact that the background scene remains static, which happens to be true in this case. This helps us avoid any unnecessary computation overheads. As the name suggests, this algorithm works by detecting the background and assigning each pixel of an image to two classes, either the background, assuming that it's static and stable, or the foreground. It then subtracts the background from the current frame to obtain the foreground. By the static assumption, foreground objects will naturally correspond to objects or people moving in front of the background. In order to detect moving objects, we first need to build a model of the background. This is not the same as direct frame differencing because we are actually modeling the background and using this model to detect moving objects. When we say that we are modeling the background, we are basically building a mathematical formulation that can be used to represent the background. So this performs in a much better way than the simple frame differencing technique. This technique tries to detect static parts of the scene and then updates the background model. This background model is then used to detect background pixels, so it is an adaptive technique that can adjust according to the scene. Let's learn about naive background subtraction now. We will start the background subtraction discussion from the beginning. What does a background subtraction process look like? Consider this image and let it represent the background scene. Now let's introduce a new object into the scene. If we compute the difference between this image and our background model, you should be able to identify the location of the TV remote. The overall process looks like this. Here the abstract difference is obtained and you get to see the subtracted image with the threshold value. You must be wondering why we call it the naive approach. It works under ideal conditions and as we know, nothing is ideal in the real world. It does a reasonably good job of computing the shape of the given image but it does so under some constraints. One of the main requirements of this approach is that the color and intensity of the object should be sufficiently different from that of the background. Some of the factors that affect these kinds of algorithms are image noise, lighting conditions, autofocus in cameras, and so on. Once a new object enters our scene and stays there, it will be difficult to detect new objects that are in front of it. This is because we don't update our background model and the new object is now part of our background. Now consider this screen. Now let's say a new object enters our scene. We identify this to be a new object, which is fine. Let's say another object comes into the scene. It will be difficult to identify the location of these two different objects because their locations overlap. Here's what we get after subtracting the background and applying the threshold. In this approach, we assume that the background is static. If some parts of our background starts moving, then those parts will start getting detected as new objects. So even if the movements are minor, say a waving flag, it will cause problems in our detection algorithm. This approach is also sensitive to changes in illumination, and it cannot handle any camera movement. Needless to say, it's a delicate approach. We need something that can handle all these things in the real world. Great. In this video, you just learned why to separate an image from the backgrounds and then learn how to remove it. 